Hi, I'm Linda Keane uh, from AREA and today with me I've got Camilla Nair who is going to be coming over to the UK and uh, running a, an aqua yoga course for us um, when we all get out of this dreaded lockdown. So welcome Camilla. Um, Good morning. <laughs> oh mo yes it is, it's morning to you, it's after <laughs> <laughs> afternoon to me. I've got to get used to that aspect of things as well. So, Camilla, what, tell me a little bit about yourself, what you do. Um, well, I live in San Jose, the Bay Area of um, California. Lovely. And um, it can be. <laughs> it went a lot of rain <laughs> yesterday. But um, I, t I teach yoga. Um, that's my passion. And um, I'm very fortunate that that's, you know, my main source of income. And um, I specialize in aqua yoga, which has been a passion of mine for uh, about 20 years now, actually. Fabulous. Fabulous. So you say it's been a, a passion for 20 years. What made you first get into yeah. teaching yoga? With yoga or aqua yoga? Well, with, with yoga to start with, and then what led you in? Yeah, that was, um, that was my mum, actually. My mum came across a, a local yoga class. I think it was just a church hall or something. And uh, this was the days before yoga mats and props and yoga clothes uh, and all the rest of it. You know, it was still very, very quiet and not particularly well known necessarily um and so i was about 16 or 17 and uh, i used to go with uh with my mum and you know at first i was fascinated because people would take sleeping bags <laughs> pillows for you know the relaxation at the end and that sort of mystified me a little bit you know because i sort of wanted to be active but uh after it wasn't too long that i really got it there was definitely a shift um uh, in consciousness when you, you do that total relaxation at the end and that ended up being my most favorite thing and uh, we were very very fortunate because um, sort of a few miles out of town in the countryside there was a um, um, an establishment known as um, Iqbal Berry it was a beautiful um, manor house that used to be a boys school and it was taken over by Howard Kent who was really quite revolutionary in the way that he taught yoga because it was a residential center <clears throat> and they would have workshops for people with all kinds of abilities. Was that um, in the UK or in? Yeah, yeah, that was in Bedfordshire. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people in wheelchairs with MS, um, people with cancer, all types of um, workshops he would run and they would stay there for one week, two weeks, four weeks, whatever and just the general public could pop in and join classes so it wasn't all thin bendy young and trendy it was very diverse populations of people and um i think that was you know that was the beginning really it was this sense of inclusion um that was very powerful and very sensible teachers very yes. sensible teachers yeah yes i like it when it's all inclusive you know it's yeah it's yeah. full of humans That's yeah right yeah yeah very fabulous so so have you always taught yoga as your full-time profession or did you have another god no <laughs> no i started off actually um in the oil exploration industry of all things um just because i didn't know what else to do and there was a job going and i thought well that sounds interesting i quite like you know geography geology <laughs> So, um, yeah, it was kind of in the marine division and uh, we would process data that they used to record in the field using air guns and cables and things to see where uh, we'd map us, you know, a picture of the subsurface so you could see where gas pockets or oil was. And I was there. It was a subsidiary of um, Texas Instruments. And I stayed there for a while, for quite a few years, actually, and then moved over into the semiconductor start side. and. Um, worked in distribution marketing which was a completely different ball game again lots of bs lots of ego um you know you remember the days we're old enough to remember what you know what it was like yeah. to try to get on in the world as a woman yeah. and uh, and that was my start really and then um 
my then husband, I was married at the time, he got offered a job. Everything it was consolidation. And of course, consolidation is um, probably why we're at where we're at now with this bloody virus, you know, consolidating yeah. things. So uh, they were consolidating all of the Texas instruments into one in Germany. And we were going to move to Munich, actually. I was pregnant at the time, so I didn't care. And, uh, and then at the last minute, he got offered a job in California. And it was like, oh, young mother raising kids. I think I'll go somewhere where this, you know, beach is not too far away and lots of sunshine fabulous so um yeah that's sort of how we came over to um to america i've forgotten the original question now <laughs> what did you say <laughs> what did you do oh my what did i do before and then um as my kids um you know there were toddlers starting to go to kindergarten and stuff um there's a lot of pressure on you know both people working these days isn't there Yes. Yeah. So, Even more so now. Uh, me, you know, don't you think you ought to go back to work, dear, instead of having all these coffee mornings and things? Oh. So, um, so I thought, well, okay, well, I'm going to try and do that which I really love, which is to teach yoga. And so that was, you know, that was the beginning, really. The beginning of my new career, the end of the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and how long ago was that? Oh God, that was, um, oh, I don't know, maybe 25 years ago, something like that. So 25 happy years. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been single ever since. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what was the, like the, the first step into teaching them with yoga? So you used to do yoga when you were young back yeah. in the day. Yeah. You sort of like got a proper job. Um, <laughs> and had the children um yeah. went to california and then what was you sort of got sort of back involved in yoga yeah so what was yeah you know it's without getting too mystical because i know you know the aquatic people aren't necessarily interested in that aspect of yoga but there's a bigger picture to yoga what people actually practice um is something called hatha yoga hatha yoga which yeah. is the physical discipline, which is a very small um, part, actually, of the system of yoga, which is more about um, self-improvement, self-awareness, self-discipline and, you know, enlightenment. You know, what is our purpose of being? Um, you know, a lot of people are reflecting on that now, aren't they? And it, it's a good thing, actually. You know, there's a lot of good that's going to come out of this, um, you know, kerfuffle, hopefully. And a lot of it is, you know, re you know, because there's a lot of greed uh, in the world. Um, uh, and so hopefully, you know, we're going to start to ask questions a little bit more. And um, in the system of yoga, um, it's very philosophical. And, um, you know, one of the main obstacles is this clinging to the physical body that we have. And we're supposed to be able to confront that, just recognizing that, there is no, um, nothing stays the same. You know, we look in the mirror and we see the face falling and everything, everything's going south because we're in a gravitational field. And, um, you know, we just recognize that it's all change. That's why we're supposed to be out in nature and looking at the, the seasons changing and stuff. There's a time to live, there's a time to die. And um, as humans we want everything to be the same we want to stay young we want to have all the money we want to have the love we want to have the children you know we want to keep everything together and um yoga more than anything is a process of letting go you don't actually get anything um you know there's things that that happen along the way but it depends on where you are where your physical body is where you know your mental clarity is where your emotionality is and um it's just about being in the moment and addressing you know whatever you have it's like you know you when you see a client you teach uh who's in front of you what's yeah, the form and function absolutely. and how can you get them to um to be in a better state and yoga the system of yoga we um we look at various layers to the physical body this this layer here that we see the physical body you know the muscles and the bones and the organs is just the outer expression of who and what we are it goes much much deeper and so um yeah i think that's that's really fascinating to me yeah. 
Yeah. The deeper I've looked into fascia, the more I've sort of realised yeah. that, you know, this this that you see of us is is not really... Yeah. It's yeah. All that slipping and sliding. Yeah. 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 And, so uh, you know, and yoga, I think, is a great way of moving fascia. You know, yeah. it's that full pose it with tensegrity, full mm. attention without tension in the body. Um, and so it means that... Um, there's not really everyone if every if you have a room full of like 10 people there are 10 different practices 10, 10 different expressions of a pose and um as i was taught yoga is not just that you know the shape that we bring the body into it's actually known as a pranic model and prana is life force it's chi yeah. Um, and so that's what i'm looking for as a teacher in my students how much prana they bring to a particular pose a particular asana yeah. and then trying to unblock areas uh, help them unblock areas to get that hydrated and ready for what comes next basically in the next moment because this moment mm -hmm. ends and then there's another moment directly yeah. afterwards yeah yeah we're, we're full of future moments uh, definitely. So, so how long um, in each day do you practice personally and do you teach for the yoga? Someone asked me that a long time ago, actually. And I said, <laughs> I had to think about it for a while because I'm trying to think with, I'm lucky because I've had a lot of formal training with a very wise teacher. And so <clears throat> I say, well, I try to, I strive to try and practice 24 seven. I don't differentiate um, practicing yoga poses on a mat to having a conversation with my neighbor, for example, um, or cooking a meal um, yeah. or taking the dog for a walk. You know, it, uh, yoga is kind of more a lifestyle than, ever, than anything and, and an attitude. So, yeah, the, the yoga poses are great for easing the body letting go of tension and we have to maintain it like a car don't we so yes. we can't afford to sit and do nothing the prognosis is not you know is not going to be good is it if we do that and so no. we have to move the body we have to find a way of moving the body and uh, yoga is not the only way of doing it of course mm -hmm. but it's it's great because the system of yoga the science of yoga invites us to become more aware of what it is that we don't know and how we can improve our life. I think, don't, I mean, you probably will agree with this, but up until um, this lockdown, we were all too busy in rushing forward into the next moment and not actually being present. I know, I know. Now. You know, one and of I the things, that, yeah, yeah. One of the things, I mean, I teach, you know, I travel and teach a lot to different, um, to different locations. And um, one of the blessings is the fact that I don't have to drive. <laughs> I don't have to drive anymore, you know, and um, I can go out and I can walk a little bit more, walk the dog. And I'm not rushing to do things. My day is still full because there's still so much to do. And now we're sort of transferring to teaching online and I'm always studying and things like that. You know, the housework hasn't got any better. I must have just looked at the floor this morning. and thought that's, I need to do that. So that is yoga, actually, yeah. you know, doing the housework as well and trying to keep the house nice and clean and tidy because then you feel better, don't you? It has an effect on us. If you've got a sink full yeah. of dirty dishes, you do yeah. the dishes and then you do the yoga practice or something like that. You make yeah. the bed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, yes, it's a different way of life. Um, so, do, so do you prefer when, when you're with clients or teaching, do you prefer teaching in groups, be they whatever size they are, or the one-to-one, -one, you know, t teaching and being sort of present with an individual? Yeah, um, I think it kind of depends. I mean, you know, we, both of us, we teach bigger, you know, gigs. And I teach you know, yoga festivals. In fact, we're supposed to do a Sedona yoga festival this year. And then I was doing a woman's retreat on the back of it. That obviously got um, pushed out. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy sharing um, my passion. And 
as an, an educator, and you know this, we don't really know what we know until people ask us. Yes, true. And so, where, especially you with all your amazing credentials, you know, they're, they're just sort of, they're in, they're in your head <clears throat> until yeah. somebody, put, you know, asks you a question which unlocks, um, you know, that knowledge that you can transmit as a teacher. And that's the joy, isn't it, when you share something um, that well, can hopefully yeah. help, I mean, people, I help people. Yeah, I definitely believe you can't take it with you. So you've got to leave it as a legacy for someone else. So I'm Yeah, my guru always used to say, to you know you. what, if you, uh, you know, you want to leave something behind when you your body leaves this world. So it leaves this world. So either write a good book or have sane children. He said, I pretty much think the book is probably a safer bet. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I wrote a couple of books, but they're, they're dated. That's the only thing. When you write a book, it's dated, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's any time you put pen to paper, as long as, yeah. as long as you can leave it for someone else to pick up and sort of take it forward to the next stage yeah. that, you know, life or this world is sort of bringing us. And I think if, if you leave it in a, in a sort of, in a, in a state that somebody can pick it up and, and do the next level, because we are yeah. sort of passengers through the journey and That's right. we can only take um, what is currently known, you know, at this point in time and be as good as we can at this point in time. And yeah. then sort of, you know, down to the next generation to move it forwards. To yeah, that's right. Well, they say that the only thing that sort of um, stays out there in the universe and the, what's known as the Akashic records is uh, memories you know all that yeah. wisdom that's out there and you know we think we have an idea and it's unique um but really yeah. we just bump into we bump into thoughts thought forms yeah. and we take it on as our own and hopefully you know with all the studying and all the practicing and all the teaching that we're doing um in the next the next time we pick up a vehicle we're going to come back to the practice a little bit earlier and just continue doing what we've already been doing absolutely well you yourself i mean you're one of the people that things always in yoga because you brought it to the water yeah let's talk about that aspect yeah it wasn't without aspect. its challenge it wasn't without its challenging you know without its oh, challenges it was about 20 years ago and um this was in the, you know really in the full swing just coming to that cusp of rock star yoga teachers and um you know, all that kind, that kind of a scene, which was a little bit weird, you know, I mean, you know, I've studied a lot in India and um, that was all very different to me, all this, you know, sort of thin, bendy, young, what difficult pose can you do? And um, that was a bit weird, but um, I, um, I was working, one of the gigs I was working at was a local YMCA and it was an incredible thriving place for people to come with diverse you know, body issues, um, you know, lots of people turning up in wheelchairs and stuff. And a lot of them, as you know, were in the water. And I found that fascinating. And as a kid, I used to do synchro swimming. I was absolute rubbish at it, but my parents loved the fact that I was doing synchro and putting these shows on with, with groups of people. Um, and I was, I loved, I've always loved being in the water. And so I would, you know, when I was in the water, because I used to swim quite a bit as well, I would do a little bit of yoga in there as well. And I thought, wow, this is fascinating. Um, because as you know, um, you know, the proprioception is so acute in the water. You, you know, you just know where everything is. It's more viscous. And so there's a lot more feedback. And so I found that fascinating, but I kept it quiet. I didn't say anything. I just continued to do my lap swimming little bit of yoga in the water and teach predominantly on, on land. <clears throat> and um, we had an amazing inclusion director at the YMCA and she, um, she pulled me to one side and she said, you know, we've got so many people who are not being served by the YMCA and want to be in the water. And they're asking if um, there's a more mindful practice rather than just jumping around and woohoo and all that, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. And so I said, and it's, she said, would you be interested in starting a class? And I, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll try, you know, and see how it goes. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> she, uh, you know, she encouraged me to start this uh, class. And I was a little bit, you know, gobsmacked at first. I thought, well, it's going to be interesting because 
you know, you could think about a room, the room that you're in, the room that I'm in as being a dry swimming pool. And how am I going to communicate that when you can't see everybody in the pool? And I thought, well, I'm going to have to teach on the deck, aren't I? Which was a different concept. I mean, I'm teaching up here and it's different, obviously, to experiencing the pose in the water in a completely different yeah. environment. And I was worried that I would kind of, there would be a disconnect. Anyway, um, the first class, I probably had about 35 people in the pool and it was just, wow. I don't know how I survived it really. Of course, after that first class, lots of people dropped away because it was, it was, you know, very different for them. It was a different pace and, um, mm. yeah, it was different. And I needed, I recognized that after, after a while, trial and error, I realized that I needed to make it different. It's not just a case of translating yoga poses from the land to the water it's a completely different gambit it's like saying well you like vanilla ice cream oh don't worry just take strawberry ice cream anyway and just imagine yeah. that it's the same it's not yeah and, well, so, bubbles, <laughs> <laughs> and so um i kind of had to incorporate a little bit more of um an aerobic element into the practice because otherwise people are going to get cold even if you're in a therapy pool yeah eventually you start to get a bit chilled and so but it's good because you know as we know um people as they age they tend to underdose anyway and they're not getting the aerobic stuff that they need and so um i really thought it was like a win-win situation being in the water you know you can get the aerobic stuff in there um poses that you might have left by the wayside i'm talking about me right here here right now right poses yeah. that you don't do anymore because it doesn't make sense um you, you can actually do in the water and uh move in the same direction and try to get the same kind of feeling for example you know there's a, a pose that's sort of like side crow you're balancing on your hands you've got the knees you know on one elbow and the feet off the floor I don't do that anymore because it doesn't make any sense for my elbows, the cartilage in my elbows, but I can do that in the water and I can still feel what's happening, for example, in the spleen and the pancreas, which is what I'm trying to get to in a pose yeah. like that. So you can do that on steps in the pool and the buoyancy of the water obviously lifts the legs for you. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, the journey started with, um, with trial and error trying to teach people trying to modify my concept of what yoga should look like and also the encouragement of the students i mean um i found when i spoke to yoga teachers they sort of dismissed me as some kooky person who you know that's not that's not yoga and um which i found fascinating coming from yoga yeah. people who are supposed to be non-judgmental <laughs> um and why would you think i mean in the bigger picture of things why would you think that putting a body in water is less yoga than somebody practicing it on land so in the early years i went through a lot of prejudice from the yoga community actually my students loved it and they were the ones that encouraged me to um to write a book and to go out and train people because they said have, people have to know about this mm -hmm. i've always wanted to practice yoga or yes. i had to give yoga up because of injury or degeneration and it's now funny I can because continue. It's a, yeah it's a bit like saying um you know doing comparison between land and water is a bit like saying the comparison between doing it in the desert and doing it in a yoga studio <laughs> you know completely yeah. different things completely different environments yeah i know unless you're doing something like bikram yoga of course where they're trying to emulate that desert yes <laughs> and desert feel. but yeah very interesting so it's really i feel like it feels like a little bit of a bernie sanders movement because it came from it came from the people who were feeling the benefit it didn't come from the yoga world saying oh let's think outside the box all these yeah. um, clients and students that are now getting older and can't do the same practice that they used to, or people who want a mindful practice who have never practiced yoga and who are never going to go to a yoga mat, or people who come with injury and are looking for rehabilitation and therapy, they're not going to come to a land yoga class or a teacher who teaches on land because they probably, possibly, 
have already got an aquatic background and they know the water makes sense and they feel safe and supported. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, uh, the students were the ones, uh, I feel like they are the ones really that deserve the credit because they're the ones that encouraged me when the yoga world was very blinkered. It's changed now, it's changing now, but um, uh, yeah, I suppose I feel like some, some sort of pioneer thing. <laughs> So do, do you use any equipment in your aqua yoga? Any? The most important one is one's self-awareness, which means that if, you know, there's, there can be a lot of ego involved in teaching anything. And, um, you know, I think it just means that the, the client, the, te the, the student override, has the capacity to override um, whatever they're being taught. So if it doesn't make sense, they have to use their self-awareness to say, you know what, that doesn't feel right or question it, question the validity of what you're asking them to do. Um, and so I try to teach my um, students to think for themselves, which is what I was taught, you know, by my guru, learn to think for yourself because people are like sheeple. They'll follow everyone else and not think for themselves. And so, um, yeah, very I try much to. so. Very much yeah. so in this world. Yeah. Mm. Or in the world that we left behind three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's different. Yeah. It's going to be a different world now, isn't it? You know. And I, there's going to, I think, a lot of space for the alternative, like, you know, the yogas and the, the I Chi's and, and those. But even that practice will change now. I mean, we're yeah. all going to be germaphobes. Yes, you know, absolutely. and I mean, you know, how are people going to want to practice pranayama, for example, in a group of other people? You know, the breathing techniques and things. Um, what about hands-on adjustments? Are people going to be really, you know, freaky about those kinds of things? We're going to come out of this with a lot of fear that people need to address. And I was always taught, you know, how you address things in life, you go to the energy center above. So you go to the chakra, the vortex of energy above. Mm -hmm. And um, the base, at the base of the spine, it's linked to um, Saturn, the planet Saturn, and it's to do with the bones and the structure of the body. And it's very earth centric. Um, mm -hmm. The chakra above is around the sacrum and it's a water element. And so if you want to hear, and the, the psychological states of consciousness that are linked to chakras and at the base of the spine, that's linked to the, 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 the solid part of the body, the bones, it's linked to fear when it's imbalanced. And so um, the, the, the chakra above it is linked to Jupiter, which is an expansive planet. It's bigger, it's a big planet. And it's linked to water, which is expansive by nature. So to remove the fear, you go to the chakra above, which is a water element. And that to me, the symbolism of that is really profound. I mean, we're mostly made up of water. Why do we think that this Ziploc bag that we have can't be affected like attracting like? We're in an environment of water. We get that free lymphatic massage just Absolutely. by moving in this variable weight machine. I think it's huge. And I'm so fascinated and so excited about what you're going to be doing, you know, with your little, you know, your little probes and everything, the <laughs> ultrasound. I think that's going to really open a, a loads of doors to people healing in the water. Honestly, I, I can't wait to share some of the things that I sort yeah. of found out, you know, just by putting the ultrasound on, on the body in the water. Yeah. But the thing is as well, you, you know, you were sort of saying about how, the fear of touch when we come out of this isolation stage. But the, the good thing, of course, about us working in the pool is that the chlorine was probably the best place when, when this yeah. started, the pool was the best place to be. Yeah. To say to some of my clients, you know, they would, they'd come in and they'd be a little bit apprehensive. And I said, look, yeah, when you're in the pool, you're in the place. And actually, if you want to sneeze, sneeze into the water because it's going to kill all the bacteria, all the viruses within yeah. things. You know, don't turn your head and sneeze into the air. Do it actually in the pool. So I think, you know, for hands-on and everything, it's yeah, that's a good more, point. more yeah. people, you know, going into the pool. I mean, it's a shame that the hospitals have 
closed so many hydrotherapy pools down. Oh, I know they have. My dad was uh, my dad was doing a little bit in Bedford. Um, one of the hospitals had one, but um, when I went back in February, um, the, he got the letter. They're closing it, and it was so sad. You know, he loved being in yeah. the water. Yeah, no, the best place I think. Best place. Uh, well. I've learned a lot from you and <laughs> it's been very interesting. So despite the fact that we've talked together and spoken together, there's been lots of insightful things that you've shared with us today. Um, you're coming over to run a course for us hopefully in October, the Aqua Yoga course. Yeah, fingers crossed. Absolutely. Fingers yeah. crossed. So um, we'll look forward to that. And I'm looking forward to it because, um, you know, this would never have happened. I would never have had this journey in aqua yoga had I not come to um, the States, I don't think. Especially in this area, there's a lot of entrepreneurship here. And uh, in England, things are a little bit, bit, little bit behind, as you, you, you're well aware. You've been here enough <laughs> to know that the, the UK is behind a little bit. And, um, you know, the way that, that yoga is, is panning out in, at the moment, it's not coming now, the, the new direction of yoga is not coming from India. It's coming from the West and primarily women actually are shaping the way that therapeutic yoga is moving out into the world and trying to build bridges with our healthcare system, which is obviously burdened everywhere. Absolutely. And so, you know, the more that we can do with these, um, you know, more, um, you know, not so, you know, all these different, you know, holistic ways of working with people in therapies, um, the more chances we have of staying out of hospitals and taking responsibility for ourselves. And sometimes it means, you know, just looking at our lifestyle and our stress levels as well. Absolutely. I'm much less stressed when I spend my day in the pool. <laughs> I can't wait to get back in there. I tell you, yeah. you know, my, my, my water time now is my, my daily shower and I'm just grateful that we've got hot water because, you know, there's a lot of people in this world who there's disease everywhere, you know, people yeah. falling sick and they have no running water. So, you know, we've got to learn something from this isolation. If we don't, then we've missed the boat and we will have to face it again until we do yeah. get it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I miss being in the water like you. I can't wait. It's that, you know, that, that excitement that we have when we get in there. And um, I said to I, someone the other day, I feel like a goldfish on the carpet. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> Could be a nice card, <laughs> a little birthday card picture. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you very much, Camilla, for spending. Oh, the you're more than welcome. And, and I, I look forward to coming to the UK and yeah. inspiring pioneers um, in aqua yoga. Actually, that that will be the first. Um, they will be the first tribe to go out there and share it with the world. And uh, I think that's great because they're hopefully going to move on and become the teachers of the future, training other teachers and getting this modality out into the world to help people. Excellent. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Good. Come on. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> Stay safe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>